What I'm working on here with Elijah is getting up the line, not necessarily down the line after his jab. So he's in the mid post now. If he were to jab to his left, as his defender, I would have to shift. Okay, then when he takes that dribble, normally I would open up my hips and try to slide to cut off his angle. If he were to dribble directly downhill, I could still jump and contest that shot. But if he were to jab left and then dribble up line, his angle is going to be far enough away that I can't contest that. What I'm working on with Rio right now is getting his elbow to his eyebrow when he follows through. This allows the ball to have more arc and a softer touch and in the end allows you to be more consistent with your jump shot rather than what a lot of players do and that's to push it from their nose or their chest. Notice how simple but effective these live ball moves are that he's performing right now. There's not a lot of movement and or ball handling that goes into it. It's a lot of footwork that I'll talk about later on in the video. One of the main reasons I put the original workout video with Elijah in here that was a week or two ago was to show that in this video we pretty much do the same stuff. And I talked about it a little bit in episode 5 with Jacob that high school players, players in general, need a few go-to moves and counter moves. They don't need a ton of moves and a lot of high school players don't have a game plan. They catch the ball and then they don't really know what to do. So every player I work with, I want them to have a game plan in every situation, have a few go-to moves, and if their defender cuts off that read, they have another read they can get to. One of the 
best things you can do to develop your game as a player is to play one-on-one -on -one with rules. And so in episode 5, they played a one-on-one -on -one in transition, one shot. After you passed half court, you only got five dribbles. And this episode, they're playing one-on-one -on -one from either the wing or the top of the key with three dribbles in one shot. As long as you set rules, the game will be purposeful and you'll get something out of it as a player. I don't have any interviews for this episode, so what I want to do is talk a little bit about things I hear in the basketball world and tell you if they are true or not in my opinion. Myth number one, you need crazy handles to be a good ball handler. Incorrect. In my opinion, there are three main things that lead to being a good ball handler. Number one is being able to handle pressure. Number two is being able to get from point A to point B without turning it over. And number three is being able to get by your defender. You don't need crazy handles to do any of those three things. You simply need to be able to change your pace and you need to throw your feet, your eyes, and your shoulders in the direction of your move to really sell any move you're doing. Once the defender commits on your cells, then you simply go past them. The biggest problem high school players have with handling pressure or trying to go by their defender is they make too many moves. My third grade coach told me something I'll never forget and I always say to my players, one move and go. Myth number two, basketball is an equal opportunity sport. Incorrect. The best players deserve to play the most and the best shooters and scorers deserve to take the most shots and have the most opportunity to score. If you think you deserve to play more, get better. If you want to have a chance to score more points, become a better shooter and become a better basketball player. Myth number three, you don't need a trainer to be a good basketball player. Correct. In my opinion, basketball is the best sport in the world because all you need to get better is simply a ball and sometimes a goal. With that being said, a trainer can definitely help if the workouts are game-like and purposeful. And so what I mean by that is this, everyone right now seems to want to be a basketball trainer. In my opinion, it's the most saturated market in the world. And the way people are judging if you're a good trainer or not is Instagram views. And the other day I was watching a video that had a quarter million views and it was a little girl literally dribbling a ball through a car tire. I've watched a lot of basketball. I've never seen a car tire on the court. That is not game like it is not purposeful. And the problem was there was, I don't know, 1,500, 2,000 comments, people tagging their friends. Hey, we need to try this. This is awesome. No, it's not. It looks good. It's flashy, but it has no game relevance. So if you're going to take the time, money, and resources to invest in a trainer long term, make sure their workouts are purposeful and game-like so you'll see results in your game. 